your forward progression should not be contingent upon other people's awareness of their impact in your life, no matter who it is. Welcome to Holistic Ambition, where we talk with visionary leaders who are redefining what it means to be ambitious and successful with more well-being, meaning, and fun in your career, business, and relationships. I'm your host, Stephanie Toma, life coach for ambitious professionals and author of Confident Introvert. Today, we are going to talk about a concept that I call recycled pain. So maybe you have an intuitive idea of what this is, but I'm going to break it down. It essentially is the process and the end result of an experience that is painful. So an example here can be, let's say, an artist who uh, creates something that is maybe even beautiful uh, or has some sort of value to others through something that was really painful. There can be a sort of contrast in this experience. There can be a sort of metamorphosis inherent within it. And something that I'd like to emphasize is that the recycling component Some people may want to bypass this, understandably so. It can be really uncomfortable to intentionally go through the process of recycling the pain versus being like, oh, here's the pain. Let's just imagine that it's something different or that it's not there. That can be a little bit more appealing to some. However, for those of us on the personal growth path, personal growth journey, we know that it's not always as straightforward as that. Certainly, if you've been spinning around doing the same thing over and over and over again without results. Maybe it's time to switch things up, or maybe it's time to actually entertain the idea that you're not broken. That's a concept, but you know, there's, there's this concept that's related called post-traumatic growth that has gained popularity in recent years. And this concept states that through traumatic events that happen in our lives, it could be an element of childhood trauma. It could be, let's say, a natural disaster. Just anything that you find particularly traumatic for you, um, there's this idea that it actually can inspire some sort of amazing forward progression. So that is an element of recycled pain. But let's think about recycling for a moment. <laughs> so not just in a metaphorical concepts, conceptual way, but the process of recycling, you, let's say, use a product, maybe it's a milk carton, for example, you empty its contents out, you consume what's within it. And then ideally what you're doing is putting that in your recycling bin. Eventually you transport that recycling bin that's full of recycled goods, put it in, let's say the recycling bin that then will be taken from outside and reproduced and reconfigured into something new that has some sort of value that's reimagined that could be pretty similar to how it was before, or it could be completely transformed. So with our pain, it's important to, first of all, identify that there's value in it, that maybe it looks like, you know, in the words of a famous author, a shit sandwich, right? Do you know who that is? (laughs) But it doesn't need to stay that way. This is a part of having a growth mindset where you believe that there is meaning. And if there isn't already meaning, you readily will ascribe meaning. You will choose the story in which your life is unfolding within. And this can be such a game changer. Let's say if you really are in the thick of it, it's not a bypass. It's not saying, oh, this is actually good right now in real time. Because if you've ever been in the thick of it, and someone tries to tell you, oh, this is actually such a blessing, you know, they're missing a few points there, right? That's toxic positivity. That's not necessarily validating your current emotional experience because we first need to validate the emotional experiences that we have had to move forward. That's why so many people, clients I've worked with, myself on my own journey, countless friends have maybe even taken a step back to reflect on things that occurred in our lives at a previous point that maybe we haven't actually processed fully (laughs) because if you haven't given the time, energy, and attention to those more shadowy aspects that can be running the show from behind the scenes, then that's when patterns 
emerge and reemerge in our lives. So to be able to successfully transmute the pain into a recycled pain, it's important to first acknowledge that the pain is real and valid. And it may be possible that you have been waiting for someone else to validate it. Could be a therapist, could be a coach, could be a friend, could be the quote unquote perpetrator of the pain. So this can actually be a common pitfall, a trap that people fall into when they are seeking that, oh, like I need this person to say that what they did was wrong or that they acknowledge that what they did hurt me in some way. And you know what? Sometimes those apologies don't come. Your forward progression should not be contingent upon other people's awareness of their impact in your life, no matter who it is. So this is an instance where there is an opportunity to make a radical decision of self-responsibility, having that be your default. So to successfully transmit your pain through this process of recycling it, reuse, repurpose, recycle, you're not saying, oh, it was never that thing before. Nope. It's bad. It's wrong. It's gone. We're only focusing on the new thing. But actually, some people may be in your presence, have no freaking clue what you've been through, right? So it's not about lingering on, oh, all these things happened. Can you believe that? Even though I'm this now, oh, look at this. You may do that occasionally, but what's most impactful and most effective is almost having this inner sense of gratification of and validation of your own lived experience. And first acknowledging whatever icky emotion that there was, you know, there could be an element of shame, something that you wish wasn't done to you, that you wish you didn't do. And there's an element of understanding maybe where that action came from, having compassion for yourself and or others, most likely a combination, because in our lives, we rarely live in a vacuum. So we are in this place where we've acknowledged, okay, that was not so great. And that's almost where the liberation begins, where you're able to not be stuck there like quicksand and be swallowed up by a hole, like, oh, that wasn't so great. And that's that end of story. You get to say, okay, how, even though you can't go back and change it, how can you get to a place of reframing the story so that, you know, not pathologically, you're still understanding, like maybe you're able to actually own, hey, I'm not proud of that. I'm not proud that I did that. But you can know within yourself that you're not denying that you to yourself that you did that. Or if someone did something to you, you're, you're also able to acknowledge your role in it not to be confused with victim blaming or shaming, but in our lives, the situations that we invite into it, even as kids, I know this is is where it gets a little more radical, right? There's a sort of energetic resonance that we have, that we perpetuate, that once we have an awareness of, we're able to activate our power within. So this is where we kind of veer a little bit away from actual recycling of plastic products, for example, it gets a little more, uh, you know, flesh and blood, very sort of real tangible, but yeah, there's this idea of fully accepting and owning a thing that happened to be able to get to this place of full embrace of a new and better and more aligned higher self within the, both the present and the future. Having this even more abstract understanding of the law, non-linear nature of time. <laughs> so, you know, when it comes to recycling pain, this is kind of where the toxic positivity, you can push that to the side. But if you are able to be in the moment of something painful and trust and know and set the intention for it to become just that, recycled pain, that's where timelines begin to blur and can begin to expedite in the direction that you would most like to go. So allow this to be your invitation. Any pain that you are holding on to consciously, subconsciously, if sometimes it shows up as a glimmer, as a little spark of emotion that can be gone in a flash, you're like, oh, what was that? Didn't like that. Okay, maybe I'm not going to look at it. Allow yourself to linger for even 30 seconds more and observe it and allow it to eventually pass. How we recycle pain is by fully acknowledging that the pain is real and exists and that it's a natural part of the experience of being alive. 
And as cliche as it may sound, it allows us to know the difference between what feels good and what feels bad for us. And if we can actually get out of that false dichotomy of, you know, this is something that feels good. This is something that feels bad. Just knowing that everything is here to serve you. And the more tuned in you are to your intuition, the greater likelihood, not that you're going to avoid the uncomfortable, painful situations, but that you're able to garner the wisdom that is inherent in them. If you will only take a moment to acknowledge and appreciate it. So I hope that you found something useful in this sort of stream of consciousness right here on recycled pain. I am thanking you for going ahead and tuning in and being on this journey, you know, being on this journey of having this podcast that's intended to expand conversations, expand a level of awareness on certain more abstract topics that are so inherent in how we show up in our lives. So thank you for being here. And also I would be remiss if I didn't also ask you to go ahead and like, subscribe, do all the things uh, and stay tuned for an upcoming episode of Holistic Ambition. We have so many great speakers. We also have some solo episodes that I like to pour my heart and soul into. Wishing you a beautiful day. Until next time.